Everybody who makes something really, really wonderful gets there through a process of making something that's really not that great to start with, and then slowly improving it, taking feedback, getting new ideas, and what I think is a, a process that's a little bit closer to the real world. The decisions that you need to make today are decisions about what's going to get into the game and what's going to need to be left out in order for you to finish in time for the fifth graders to actually play these games in a week. Okay? And this project that they're working on right now is the biggest one of the year. They're, um, they're making an educational video game for a particular fifth grade class that we went and visited at a local elementary school. Oh, oh, it's when the, when the corn pops yeah. up and it's ready to harvest. Do you have to actually activate on each one? And so we went and, and interviewed the students and got to know them and found out what kinds of music they listen to, what movies they like, the cartoon characters that they follow, the video games that they already play. <laughs> students also interviewed the fifth grade teacher and found out what the learning objectives are, the California state fifth grade content standards. And so by going there and really seeing what their classroom was like, we're, we're sort of immersed into their world and, and we understand that we're creating something for them. Why are we hitting the out of memory error? You've hit it. Images. Because of what? Too many images. Too many images or the images themselves too are too big, too big, right? Too big. The software that we use so, is called Processing and it's actually a, a project that was initiated at the MIT Media Lab. It uses the Java syntax. The thing that processing provides is a, a built-in graphics library and a really easy sort of development process. So you don't have to compile it, you just push play, and then your code immediately turns into something that's happening on the, on the screen. It's pretty interesting to do, I mean like, if you want to be a computer uh, scientist, then it's a good starter. We form teams, and the teams go through a brainstorming process and an idea refinement process. Right now I have teams of three. The different roles that the, that the students take on are the technical lead, and that's the person who's going to be sort of most responsible for the programming, the art lead, the person who's going to be responsible for not only the concept art, but actually the production art, the, the actual you know, pixels that go on the screen during the game, and then a project manager. Half the map is going to be like a city, other half is going to be like a, like a grass plain type of area. And I'm the project manager, which is basically telling these guys when the project is due, like what we need to catch up on, the schedule, um, or what kind of pace we're going to be on. Instead of having there be a designated designer role, it's actually that everybody is the designer. I took like an image of a horse shrinking down, and then I remade it into a pixelated horse. <laughs> there's 13 teams, and, there, and there's some pretty interesting stuff going on. There's a game called Cookie Attack, and, uh, and it's about fractions. I, I think this is a, a real achievement in terms of responding to the audience. We noticed that the fifth graders, they this kind of like violence, and we kind of incorporate it into our game where they have to answer questions to get the cookies, and they have to use the cookies to shoot the monsters. I'm better at programming than all the other stuff, so I did the programming. And then uh, Miranda, she's better at Photoshop, so she did the uh, graphics. And then Angel, her part was to separate kind of like the jobs and then find some concepts. Just recently, actually, that fifth grade class came here to Galileo and visited us, and we had a chance to show them some demos and some prototypes of, of the games that, that my students are working on. And my students took that feedback to really help them shape their games. Was this in the same thing? No, this is screen number three. This one, you exit in. No, no, no. Oh. I really want to know if they get bored of the game or if they're having fun with it, because it makes me feel happy if they if they like the game, but if they have some bad feedback, then I'd have to work on it some more, you know? By doing a project that, that has a real audience, I, I think it provides a little bit more motivation to, to really put the effort into making it good. Um, and that allows them an opportunity to find out that you don't just make something good the first time you try. And software that's running on computers, whether it's on your smartphone or on your desktop computer or on a website somewhere, that software 
dominates a lot of our reality. And so having some idea of how those things work, I think allows you to, to be just a more informed citizen.